Making an AccuCast 380 hand mold. We're going to make a mold of a hand using AccuCast 380 alginate. Now the first step is to have a container ready to pour the alginate into to make the mold and to have your subject release their hand with a thin layer of Vaseline. It's a good idea to make sure that the Vaseline is applied to the wrist area well above where the mold will end. Now AccuCast 380 is broken down like this. The 3 stands for the set time of the alginate and 80 is the water temperature required to get that set time. So the coating system is 3 for the set time, 80 for the water temperature. So that means we're going to have about 3 minutes working time at 80 degree water temperature. If we have colder water it will be slower. If we have hotter water it will cure faster. Now we're going to scoop out three quart size scoops of AccuCast 380 alginate. Now anytime you scoop out and you measure by volume like this, you want to make sure that you don't hard pack your alginate into your mixing cup or into your measuring cup. If you do that, it will throw off the ratio and it will be much too thick. Once we've measured out our 380 alginate ready to add the water. Now you'll notice we're adding a little bit more than three parts water. We're adding about three and a half parts water. And you can vary that a little bit depending on if you want your alginate to be thicker or thinner. Now notice we poured the water into the dry alginate and not the other way around. You always want to add water to alginate and not alginate to water as adding the alginate to water makes it very difficult to mix the very low density alginate down into the water. Now ready to pour the alginate into our, into our mold container, which in this case is a little iced tea, a cardboard iced tea cylinder. And one of the benefits of AccuCast 380 is it undergoes a color change when it's ready for your subject to stick their hand in. Notice how it's turned white. And as soon as it changes color to white, your subject is ready to plunge their hand into the alginate. Now notice we're having our subject stick their hand into the alginate and we pull it out and we knead in and massage the alginate into the surface detail of their hand. And that's an important step. If we don't do that and they just plunge their hand down into the liquid alginate, we can wind with, up with a lot of surface bubbles trapped on their skin. So always a good idea to have them pull their hand out briefly, massage the alginate into the surface of their skin, and then plunge their hand back down into the alginate. Also, it's a good idea to have them put, push their hand down just to the bottom of the container and then back off by about a half inch. And that ensures that we don't have them right up against the bottom of our mixing or our mold container. Now, in just a few minutes, our alginate is set and it will have demold strength where we can pull their hand out carefully. Now, before we pull their hand out, we want to be patient and remove the little vimiscus of the pore around their hand. And that's that little part that that uh, where the alginate meets their arm where it, it makes a right angle. We want to remove that little bit of alginate because when they pull their hand out that will most likely rip and if it tears off and there's little bits of it we don't want that falling down into our alginate mold as that could uh, wind up contaminating our casting later on. Now an alginate mold like this has a lot of suction and that's the main reason we want our subjects hand coated in a layer of Vaseline that will help break the suction and help them get their hand out of the finished mold. Um, if we don't do that, uh, the suction, keep in mind we basically created a hand sized suction cup and just a little bit of Vaseline will help their hand come out a lot easier. If not, you may be in for a fight pulling that out. And if your subject has dry skin, there may be some sticking. Now for this casting we're going to pour up a gel tin silicone hand casting like we've done in some of our other videos. For this we're just going to mix up some regular Platsil gel tin silicone one to one and this silicone mixes by weight or volume and here we're mixing it by volume in one of our meter mix cups and James's hand, our subject, took about 16 ounces of silicone to fill his hand so we're mixing up 8 ounces of part A and 8 ounces of part B. Now to create a realistic copy of his hand we're going to add some of our flesh tone, our silicone flesh tone. So we mix up our parts A and B and we're going to add just a little dab of silicone color. It doesn't take much 
to get a very realistic flesh tone. Now keep in mind there are other silicone pigments available that you can add uh, to create any number of uh, skin tones that you require, uh, but our basic flesh tone is pretty good as a starting point for to achieve most Caucasian skin tones. Now once that's mixed in, just for fun, we're going to add a little bit of flocking. And flocking can also be used to supplement silicone pigments to add some more realism. Here we're going to add a little pinch of blue and a little pinch of red. And we sell a full range of flocking also if you want to add uh, more realistic looks to your silicone creations. The red gives the look of veining in the finished casting. And this is especially handy if you're doing uh, casting silicone castings for film work where these will, will be subjected to the scrutiny of close-up photography. Now once we've got those components mixed in, and notice again we're using proper mixing technique of stirring, scraping the sides and the bottom of the mixing container. Now we flip over our mold and we're ready to pour our hand in Platsil Gel Tin Silicone. Now check out our other videos where we go into this process a little more and actually paint the finished hand using more gel tin silicone. Now it's a good idea to pour in a thin stream to help break up any air bubbles since we're using some shortcut methods here and we're not vacuum degassing our silicone. It's a good idea to pour in a thin stream to help break up any bubbles of that, that are going to occur uh, as of from mixing that silicone. Now once we've filled up our hand cast, gel tin, uh, if we haven't added any accelerator or any of the retarder, we're going to have about a 30 minute demold time once it gels. So once this is mixed in, I'm going to do a quick slosh around the sides to make sure we burp out any air bubbles that may be down in the fingertips. And then we're going to allow it to gel and demold our finished hand cast. Now, if you're doing a hand mold with a more radical pose, it is very important that you do this next step where we rotate this mold and slosh the silicone around to help burp any air bubbles to the surface. Now at 70 degrees room temperature, you should be able to demold your hand in about 30 minutes. And notice we demold what's left over in our mixing cup first just to make sure it has strength to pull this out of the mold. Now a little trick I'm going to show right here is on hand molds if we're very careful we can pull a hand out of an AccuCast 380 mold very carefully and reuse that mold as you'll see in another video where we use the same mold to cast an Easy Flow 60 hand. So if we're very careful here, we can make several silicone hands from the same mold.